There once was a hard-working woodcutter and his beautiful daughter. One day, the woodcutter and his daughter were sat in the forest, enjoying the sunshine. They were talking about trees. Why do we have trees? I don't like trees. You should like trees. Trees help you breathe. How? I don't understand. Trees use carbon dioxide to make food, but they also produce oxygen, and us humans breathe in oxygen. The daughter was not very clever, and this was far too scientific for her to understand. Carbon me what it goes in trees, and not your cool goes in us. I still don't get it. Never mind. The woodcutter shook his head. She never understood anything. By this point, the woodcutter was getting very bored. Only if the woodcutter had enough money to send her to school. It would make life a lot easier. Have I ever told you about the two princesses and the mischievous fairy? No, Papa, please tell me. The woodcutter wasn't sure whether he had time to tell her a story. He had lots of work to be done, but she looked at him pleadingly with her big blue eyes. He couldn't resist them and they both sat down. Come and sit down then. Here goes. In the East Castle, on the edge of the kingdom, a beautiful princess was posing in front of a gilt mirror. As usual, she was admiring her own gorgeous looks. There never was a princess more vain than the princess of the East. Mirror, mirror on the wall, do I look beautiful today? Yes, you look as beautiful as ever, Your Highness. Do you think my eyeshadow suits me? It's brand new. Yes, of course, Your Highness. No, you look like a clown. What did you say? Er, uh, just singing. Just then, a mischievous fairy fluttered in. Now there is something you need to know about this fairy. She was not a fully qualified fairy. She had been expelled from the Twinkle School of Magic for inappropriate behaviour. She got out her colourful wand and said her magic spell, and that was the start of the chaos. Twinkle, twinkle, good as ever, turn this princess cute as a feather. With the bing bang bosh and a stroke of her wand, the princess turned even more beautiful and even more kind than ever. Oh, uh, never mind, Mira, it doesn't matter now. I can have secrets, so can you. Thank heaven for that. So off the beautiful princess went to have another look at herself in the mirror. In fact, she spent all day and most of the night in front of it. In the West Castle at the far side of the kingdom lived another princess. The Prince of the West was relaxing as usual in her chambers. She was a lazy kind of princess who never lifted a finger. Her servants were very overworked. She couldn't even get herself a drink of water. Water, what please? Suddenly, the mischievous fairy appeared. I wonder what kind of mischief she will cause this time. Stroppy, stroppy, bad as ever. Turn its princess silver as leather. So that is what our fairy was up to. She intended to cause real chaos today. She flicked her wand and muttered a spell. And here pressed her. The princess of the west was even more bossy and, and hoity-toity than ever. I demand for my water now. That water is warm. I want freezing cold water. And if it is not cold, I will chop your head off. Back in the woods, the woodcutter picked up his axe with a yawn. He was tired. I'm getting too old for all this physical work, he thought to himself. What the woodcutter secretly yearned for was a small retirement home by the sea. I am going to get on with my work for definite. So stay out of my way, Elizabeth. OK, I'll just sit here bored out of my skull. Don't get cheeky with me, Elizabeth. Elizabeth had a very cheeky smile on her face. If only she had the brains to entertain herself, thought the woodcutter. It was not long before Elizabeth was fed up. In fact, it was only five minutes. Please can we go home now? I'm cold and hungry. Besides, I've got a bad feeling about today. And she was right. For the first time in her life, Elizabeth was right. Something mysterious was about to happen. In the tree that the woodcutter had just chopped down lived the mischievous fairy. As the tree plummeted to the ground, the fairy was crushed and fell down dead and unnoticed. 
come on then, it has got a little chilly and you'll look ready for bed. Hurry. The woodcutter and his daughter strolled through the now dismal woods headed for the cottage. I love you, Papa, and I'm sorry for being cheeky. I love you too, Poppet, but you'll have to learn to hold your tongue. Elizabeth frowned. The woodcutter said nothing but shook his head and wrapped his arms around his brainless daughter. Back in the woodcutter's cottage, Elizabeth was busy preparing soup. It was boiling on the stove. They started chatting again. Do you think those princesses are still alive? Doubt it, Poppet. But Papa, you're not that old. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. I'll just go answer the door. Don't touch the stove. Yes, Papa. Now, when the woodcutter answered the door, he got the shock of his life. He could not believe his eyes. Standing there in the doorway, who should it be than the two princesses? The princess of the east and the princess of the west. Excuse me, but is this the home of our saviours? We came to thank you. Elizabeth had heard the commotion at the door and wanted to know what was going on. Who is there, Papa? <coughs> Come in. The woodcutter was speechless. After all this time, the two princesses were still alive. It took quite a while for him to recover from the shock and remember his manners. He bowed politely and asked them in. After all, the princess of the West did have a bad temper and he didn't want to lose his head. We have come to thank you. By chopping down the tree and killing the fairy, we are restored to normal and we act normal. As a reward, we would like to give you a hundred gold coins. The woodcutter was delighted. A hundred gold coins? His problems would be over, and what is more, he could now afford to send Elizabeth to school. Maybe, just maybe, she would develop some common sense. The end! Yay!